Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I hope you all are having a good day. Today's topic is on law of returns to scale. So without any further delay, let's understand the topic. We already know that production involves the transformation of physical inputs into physical outputs. This depicts a functional relationship between the inputs and outputs. Mathematically, we write it as quantities of output as a function of quantities of inputs. We can take a for instance that inputs like labor, capital, raw materials like metal components, plastic, spring, etc. and many other such inputs are required in the formation of our final product that is our output which is the pen. So this is the whole idea about production function. We have already made a video on the concepts related to production function. You can click on the i button to see the video. The production function is divided into two types. One is short run production function and another one is long run production function. In case of short run, output is a function of inputs where one input is kept as variable while all the other inputs are kept as constant. Here we see Q is the output and L and K are labor and capital respectively. This particular functional relationship shows that output is a function of labor and capital where labor and capital are inputs but here labor is the variable input and capital is kept as constant. The study of short run production function is the subject matter of law of variable proportions which has already been covered by us. The second kind of production function which is the long run production function shows the output as a function of variable inputs. Here output is a function of labor, capital, raw materials. Labor, capital, raw materials that is L, K and M are the inputs, the factor inputs and all these inputs are variable in nature because in long run all the factors are variable. The study of long run production function is the subject matter of law of returns to scale about which we will be studying now. Law of returns to scale explains the proportional change in output with respect to proportional change in inputs. That means depending upon the proportion of inputs employed, the production of output also changes. On the basis of this statement, the law of returns to scale is categorized under three heads. Increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale and finally diminishing or decreasing returns to scale. When output of an organization increases in a greater proportion than the increase in inputs, it is known as increasing returns to scale. Let us take an example. Suppose the output to be produced is car. The inputs employed in the production of car are labor and capital. So the resultant production function is car is a function of labor and capital. Now if all the inputs are increased by let's say x proportion and production of car increases by twice the proportion of input employed that is by 2x proportion then this is a case of increasing returns to scale because here the proportion of output produced is more than the input employed. 
diagrammatically also we can show the increasing returns to scale returns to scale are usually explained with the help of isoquants here the x axis represents labor and y axis represents capital when more inputs are employed the production increases which causes the isoquant to shift from q1 to q2 and then to q3 here we see that as the isoquant shifts the distance between each successive isoquant reduces that means the distance between q1 and q2 and then between q2 and q3 it is reducing this implies that output increases with smaller increments in input that means less input is employed and the output that is produced is more than proportionate in nature if we increase all the inputs in a given proportion and the output increases in the same proportion then returns to scale are said to be constant in our car example if inputs are increased by let's say 2x proportion and car production also increases by the same proportion that is 2x then the returns to scale are said to be constant similarly if the inputs are tripled and outputs are also tripled then it is considered to be a case of constant returns to scale diagrammatically also we can show the operation of constant returns to scale in a form by the equal distance between the isoquants here we see the distance between q1 and q2 and q2 and q3 are equal this depicts that there is operation of constant returns to scale in the form a situation when the proportionate change in output is less than the proportionate change in inputs it is known as diminishing returns to scale suppose capital and labor are doubled but the production of car is less than doubled that is less than 2x then the returns to scale is termed as diminishing returns to scale when we show this diminishing returns to scale in a diagram it is portrayed by the growing distance between each successive isoquants that means the distance between q1 and q2 and then between q2 and q3 it it increases okay the, the distance between each successive isoquant it increases this means that more and more of inputs are required to obtain equal increments in output